You say vegetable gardens are much more important than houses. <laughs> Please elaborate. Oh yes, well, in the long term, we have to eat. And I always, the, the metaphor that for me is really perfect of where we've been as a country, and I'm hoping that this economic collapse that we are going through at the moment may wake people up, but we have to eat. And we haven't been paying any attention to that. I mean, we, we're obsessed with food. It's not that we're not interested in food. We're obsessed with food, you know, what the new restaurant is or what the new whatever, whatever. But as far as paying attention to where it comes from and who's growing it and how and what's the plant, what's happening to the planet, what, where it's going, where it's going on, and is it going to continue and so forth. So in the long run, it's much more important than we that we keep farmland intact than that we than that we have housing. I mean, we can live we can live without shelter. Really, we can in many parts of the country. And but the only the only essentials for life are air, water, and food. And so we need to keep in mind those those things because to the extent that we threaten any of those things by our McMansions or whatever it is we do with growing, you know. It seems to me crazy that so much of our food comes from so far away. I know, I know. It is crazy and it's been, ha it's happened for, it's, it's really a very long time. I was, I think I was saying to you earlier that I've just been teaching this thing about how Queens County, which is right outside of New York City, how Queens produced was the in 1890 was the largest producer of fruit and vegetables in the United States. The largest county, the county that produced the most fruits and vegetables, was this was was Brooklyn. Was where where Brooklyn is now. That's how recent it is that there was farmland there. And listening to a discussion this morning about how Oregon has this growth boundary around cities, I was thinking, imagine if we'd had the kind of creative pol political p push. There was a huge resistance in this country to government control over land use. Huge, I mean, we're, our individuality and ours think that you should do what you want and anything for making money just really did not encourage us to keep farmlands around. And that's, part of it is that, part of it is we had so much land out there. I mean, there was all that land out there in the Midwest and then all that land in California. But um, it, it, it didn't happen spontaneously. It happened because there were ways that people could make money by making different kinds of arrangements. But it's crazy. It's absolutely crazy. I mean, my favorite line is, a, is, a, is an economist who once said, you know, the U.S. ships butter cookies to England and imports butter cookies from England. Maybe we should just trade recipes. <laughs> You know, it's like, it's nuts. I mean, we export wheat and we import wheat. We export pork and we import pork. And it's just wh wh whoever can make money from a particular shipment, that's, that's how it's done. So it, it and I'm, I'm not saying nobody should ever import anything from anybody, but it's truly crazy to be importing something that you could grow locally. And, and, and there's no way that in a, in, a, in a larger economic sense, it's because I think one of the reasons, I should have said this before, one of the reasons I think it's looked economically sane is because of the low cost of oil. We treated energy as if it were a free good in all that. It never, you never thought about what it would cost to fly something from Israel to New York or, you know, to bring, I mean, I was once in Hawaii looking at sustainable ag and somebody took us to a place where they were using solar energy to, to keep, to put fish, don't ask the whole, I don't remember the whole thing. What I remember is that they were flying lobsters from Maine to these tanks in Hawaii, refreshing the lobsters and shipping them on to China. <laughs> And I, I, so I mean, these little stopovers. Yeah, little stopovers, the, the so they would stay alive, right? So they would be helped. And and I know that what I've heard is that we ship. I can't remember what it is. It's some kind of fish, but we ship fish to China to be filleted and then ship it back because they have cheap labor, so they can fillet it. I mean, it's that. It's insane, and, and it's, it's a crazy thing to do with food that you want to have as fresh. You know, you really want food to be fresh. That's what it's about, you know.